Preview season for Throne of Eldraine has begun, and players are already looking to pick up cards that fit with the themes of the set. We also got some information about the releases planned for next year, making this an exciting week for speculations and predictions. Let's get to the list. Number 10, Heartseeker from Darksteel. The first wave of Eldraine previews included Sir Gwen, Hero of Ashvale, a card featured in one of the new Brawl pre-constructed decks. Her ability to let knights equip for zero makes her a strong commander option for any deck looking to play Voltron style by tossing a bunch of powerful gear on a creature and then bashing in. Heartseeker has an expensive equip cost that gets negated by Sir Gwen, and if you have a board full of knight creatures, they can just pass Heartseeker down the line using it as a one-sided board wipe. And then you can do it on every following turn, making it virtually impossible for your opponent to rebuild their half of the battlefield. Number 9, Icefane Quaddle from Modern Horizons. The Bant Flicker deck has carved out a strong position for itself in Modern, as players shift away from the graveyard strategies that were significantly weakened after the bannings on Faithless Looting and Hogak Arisen Necropolis. Icefane Quaddle, Coiling Oracle, Soul Herder, and Ephemerate make up the backbone of this three color deck, in which nearly every creature draws you a card when it enters the battlefield. The deck can also loop infinite turns with Eternal Witness and Time Warp, but otherwise plays pretty fair. The card advantage you gain by blinking your own creatures every turn is usually enough to bury your opponent who won't have enough removal or counter magic to keep up with your ability to draw more cards. Stoneforge Mystic decks are out there, but still being tuned, and with Dredge decks pretty much banned out of the format, Bant Ephemerate could be top dog for a little while longer. Number 8, Undead Augur from Modern Horizons. A special livestream put on by Wizards of the Coast last week confirmed that after Throne of Eldraine we'll be revisiting Theros, with a big focus on the Underworld. The last time we were on this plane, zombies weren't exactly a supported tribe, but we did get Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which has become popular in both Pauper and Commander. With more attention being paid to the Underworld this time, it's possible Theros Beyond Death will provide more zombies, and maybe even some powerful enough for Modern. If that ends up being true, then Undead Augur will likely become a key part of any deck based around the Undead Tribe. Number 7, History of Benalia from Dominaria. With standard rotation just a few weeks away, many players are looking to offload their cards from Ixalan, Corset 2019, and Dominaria. And that works out great for anyone hoping to grab cards that can still see play in other formats. History of Benalia certainly fits the profile. It was a key card in aggressive mono-white decks for the past year, and with Throne of Eldraine about to give us more knights that'll synergize with the third verse of the saga, it could be enough to kick off a tribal-based deck in modern. The enchantment will also be right at home in a Mardu-colored commander deck, led by Sir Gwen or any other yet-to-be-revealed legendary knights from Throne of Eldraine. Number 6, Hall of Heliod's Generosity from Modern Horizons. Theros is best described as a world where enchantments matter, with our initial visit giving us bestow creatures that could be cast as auras, indestructible enchantment gods and their matching weapons, and the constellation mechanic that rewarded you for every enchantment you played. It seems very likely that Theros Beyond Death will continue this theme, and just as Undead Augur was possibly a Modern Horizons plant for future zombie decks, Hall of Heliod's generosity might be waiting in plain sight for Modern's next enchantment slinging deck. Number 5, Lotus Field from Corset 2020. Not only is it in our top 5 this week, Lotus Field was one of our top 10 selling cards for the entire month of August. The Twiddlestorm deck was likely the culprit, which gave players a fun modern deck to tinker with while Hogak and Graveyard strategies were still running the show. Lotus Field also enjoyed a brief period of experimentation in Standard, as players tried to use Blood Sun to cheat the land into play without sacrificing anything. But with that enchantment about to rotate, Field's future in the format is less defined. Throne of Eldraine does feature a new mechanic called Adamant, which rewards you for casting a spell with 3 or more mana in the right color. Lotus Field just happens to tap for 3 mana of any one color, which is a helpful coincidence. And if Theros Beyond Death brings back the Devotion mechanic, monocolored decks could be poised for a return, as the pendulum swings away from the multicolored Ravnica sets and into decks built around gods or the realms of Eldraine. Number 4, Domri and Ark of Bolas from War of the Spark. As we get closer to rotation, players begin looking for ways to minimize the impact of the changing card pool. One way to do that is by building so-called rotation-proof decks, which are constructed using only cards that will be legal once Throne of Eldraine pushes Ixalan, Dominaria, and last year's Corset out of the lineup. Alias V recently demonstrated the capabilities of a creature-heavy gruel deck, supported by a few planeswalkers from War of the Spark, including Domri and Arcabolas. Gen Dinosaur decks also like having access to Domri, but your window for making that work in standard is quickly closing, and Domri doesn't fit cleanly into any of the themes we've seen yet for Eldraine so I'd be surprised if he repeats his appearance here next week. Number 3, Knight of the Ebon Legion from Corset 2020. This one drop could be among our top sellers for a while. In addition to being a vampire, and being a good opening play for a deck based around Soren Imperious Bloodlord, it's also a knight, which means it'll be making new friends in Throne of Eldraine. 
The Black Knights we've already seen previewed form an aggressive curve. Lead off with Knight of the Ebon Legion or Falamire Knight, then Smitten Swordmaster or Order of Midnight, and then Bell of the Brawl or Murderous Rider. With many of those cards having adventures built in, you don't even have to pick between playing removal or creatures, because some of your knights are both. And if you need any more proof that Knight of the Ebon Legion is going to show up in a lot of decks, it just got a new animation that plays when it hits the table in Magic Arena. If the game's creators are expecting this one to see play, you might want to pick up your copies. Just saying. Number 2. Idol of Oblivion from Commander 2019 The Brawl pre-constructed decks for Throne of Eldraine gave us 4 new legendary creatures that can also become commanders of 100 card decks. Among them was a Layla Artful Provocateur, a fairy warlock. She has an ability that creates fairy tokens whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, which is a perfect lead-in for Idol of Oblivion. Cast the artifact, get a free token, then immediately tap the artifact to draw a card because you created a token this turn. And with the right mix of cards, you'll probably be making tokens on most turns, which makes the Idol a recurring source of card draw, and you can never have too much of that in Commander. Number 1. Colossus Hammer from Corset 2020 it's kind of funny how Brawl went from being the punchline to every dead format joke to captivating players on Arena with 5 days of exclusive early access to the 4 new pre-constructed decks, and is now having a huge impact on our top 10 sellers. Sir Gwen strikes again, because she and her knights need not pay a whopping 8 mana to lift this hammer. Most of them weren't going to be flying anyway, but the vigilant and menacing Gwen herself becomes an absolute house when getting plus 10 plus 10 for basically free. While she was designed for Brawl, and by extension Commander, Sir Gwen is technically going to be standard legal along with every other card from Throne of Eldraine. Could there be an equipment deck that attempts to go huge with knights? Or will the aggressive mono black deck put the pressure on too fast for a 5 drop to resolve? Let me know in the comments what type of deck you're thinking about building with Throne of Eldraine. Then subscribe to the channel so you stay up with future top 10s.